What's good, y'all? It's Miles and Joey from Without Warning, and we back with another podcast episode. On God, we're grinding YouTube content. Like, comment, subscribe. Y'all know what to do. But today, we're talking about the biggest shit, and it's basically what you've been fucking with lately. Who's in their prime? Who is not in their prime? Who's falling the fuck off? Who's Ideally, booming? right now, who you bumping, though? Bro, off rip. Right now, off rip, who I'm bumping, who I also think is in their prime. I think Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, like we were talking pre-pod, bro. I think those are the two most obvious guys that are like yeah, very much making the best music of their life right now. Yeah. I would say Gunna's in his prime, respectfully. I think Lil Baby is probably right now the guy peaking the most in the rap game. For sure. he's, And, and you know what, bro? Seeing him come from Thug and how long it took Thug to reach this type of attention. Yeah. Baby did that shit in like two, three years, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, even Gunn has been on some big projects for years, since yeah. 2015, 2016, and he's just now getting his shit on. Yeah. Lil Baby is kind of, like, real. after my turn, bro, one of the best-selling albums like that, like, his peak is, like, right on point. Like, I don't think Thugger really peaked in popularity until he became more of, like, a social icon around, like, 2017, 2018. But, like, when the Barter 6 came out, like, obviously, in his creation, that's prime thug. But getting the recognition, he didn't get that till later. Baby's, like, right now in his prime and getting full recognition for it. So it's got to be a dope time to be Lil Baby and Lil Baby fans. And I would say Dirk as well. You got What Dirk you but, rock with? You think he's up there? For a fact. Dirk, Dirk definitely in his prime. And it's crazy to say that now Dirk yeah. is in his prime. And like you were saying, Thug may be out of his prime. I still think Thug's in his prime now. But back to the Dirk conversation, he's been making music since 2014, 2015. He, in the last three or four years, really doubled down on the melodic shit. Yeah. So I feel like that's why it's really popping in the mainstream now. Yeah. Dirk's in a similar position that Migos were in in, like, 2017. Because they had, like, the two kind of primes early on. Because he was obviously really big popping in Chicago when he was really on a lot more of the drill shit than the melodic stuff. And that's kind of similar to what the Migos were doing when they had... Um, What's the biggest track they had with Drake? Uh, Versace. Yeah, Versace and what up? There was another big song in 2014, though. But whatever the case is. Then they had, yeah. like, Fight Night and whatever the case like that. I feel like, and then obviously 2017, Culture came out. They're the biggest stars in Atlanta, biggest stars in the rap game. I feel like that's where Dirk's at now. Dirk is getting so much love out of Chicago, and I think he honestly deserves it. Vaughn's getting a lot of light now, but he was kind of growing like, before his passing and everything, but I think it's a dope time for Dirk as well. What do you see, like, future-wise for Dirk, though? You think he's going to, like, be at the top for a while? Ah, future-wise for Dirk. I think he fits the mold of what most rap listeners want, and I think it's going to take Dirk another solid fucking project or or just a a very concise drill or trap project in general to, like... yeah keep his name going i feel like baby in my turn and then even harder than ever has two go-to albums where you could say all right as full bodies of work tough yeah the one thing i would say for dirk is like bro get your tour money like he is so big right now that he could sell out shows and get paid a lot for shows i know Lil baby's definitely raking it in but for dirk he's got to capitalize on that bag I don't know what his album spending is like for the next one, but in terms of spending money on your next album, Dirk has to get some big features on there. Personally, I'm not like super, super big into Dirk. I really like Dirk, but like from what I would want to see on a mainstream point from him is to have big features on that album. He obviously got the Drake feature before, but I think this next project's got to have the heads we're talking about. Yeah. Like it's got to have Lil Baby, Pusheisty. Gonna I, think, I think it's even ha- has to have Playboy Cardi. I yeah. think there's no reason why Dirk shouldn't want to work with a Cardi because he's just in a, a very different sonic lane as him. Yeah. And I still think they'd be able to put together some crazy shit. Yeah. But but to slide back a little to the combo, you were saying Thug's kind of out of his prime now. Yeah. I think he's still in his prime. Because he's, I it, I don't think Thug creatively in the music realm is out of his prime. But his actions of like being more of a person in the industry and just being an own boss Businessman is like type what shit. makes me think that he's more out of his prime. I think sales wise and just in his personal life, what he's like the actions he's been taking in the past two years has been more to put his family on, his friends on, younger artists on, and he's been doing a great job at it. 
Like, he's trying to pass the torch eventually to the next string of artists. And I don't care what people say, bro. The one thing you can never take away from someone, like Thug, is what he's been through to get up there. Like, I don't want to take anything away creatively saying he's out of his prime, bro, because he's just one dude that had nothing. And he's Nobody a, put Thug on like that. He's a very interesting case. Him and Kanye, you could argue in the last 50 years, bro, their music has aged the best out of some some of the biggest artists. Like, you play some Thug tracks from seven, eight years ago. Way ahead of they, his time. They are sounding like whole tracks that some of these young guys are producing right now yeah. and it sounds like it could be a top 100 hit on the radio yeah it, for I, sure i haven't really seen that with any fucking genre dude yeah that's Wh- why i'm not putting that's why i'm not putting gucci or ti or even like jeezy like early trap heads above thug because it's just different on a different level because records aren't sounding like what they were sounding like when they were doing it like that time had passed like after the whole like 2010 2011 year and the sound really changed like auto-tune wise and you're not going for radio hits anymore you're going for that more consistent shit and being yourself that when that switched that lane kind of closed and thug was just way ahead of it like he was in the perfect time in like 2011 i mean he was making music way before that like but like i'm saying like 2011 2012 he found his sound and he just went in on it and from then on, bro, if you go back, that music that he made from like 2014, even with Quan and everything like that, if you go back to their earlier mixtapes, that shit sounds like something that could come out right now and people would be like, that slept on. That's what I'm saying. Like, I really have not seen, the only other rapper I can name for a fact I've seen that from, Kanye. You yeah. can't name, I, I really feel like. And you- Kanye's, the crazy thing about Kanye is he's done it twice. Like, he did that on like late registration and college dropout and then he did it again with like yeezus like he did it twice he basically did that whole sound journey twice on being just way ahead of shit but like i would put thug and kanye in the same discussion i don't i think you have to i remember we've had this discussion too is like the greatest artist do not have primes right are you still on that I'm, wave you still co-sign that backing bro you know the one artist that really you can say has just never gotten out of his prime the weekend this dude That's just bad, had bro, honestly like i know drake as well i don't really drake we don't need to discuss drake everybody knows what drake does at this point it's great it's great that you don't have to say that anymore because people respect drake as much as he deserves but the weekend ovo XO, this dude has been since the whole trilogy he's been really on his prime right and he just had the biggest album of 2020 bro Like, and people, if you even go back to his shit, like, Beauty Behind the Madness, that had the biggest songs in the world, and he did the same thing in 2020, last year. Like, Blinding Lights is one of the most streamed songs of all time now. Like, he literally has not gotten out of his peak prime for, like, six years. And that is some Drake shit. And people don't put him up there, but he was, like, he's been bigger than the person we're even talking about. Like, he's been bigger than Thug on a mainstream level. For the entire time they've both been in the rap game and nobody talks about it but that's the one person i think is just like that doesn't get that love but i think like you said the people that have that longevity just don't get out of their primes i don't think thug will get out of his prime if thug wants to make another album uh, he definitely will i think he like just took so much fun and was like here you go this is the perfect album like that's obviously what it was right he was like fans take this this is the perfect album that you guys wanted and it was Literally. I think he's just killing it, though. Bro, the, the weekend is such a crazy example, bro, of somebody that just has not had a peak or prime. In and their his music. sales, bro. Like, oh, my God. It's, I mean, an- another dude to also name, bro, puts out a lot less content, but Frank. I yeah. feel like the desire and want for his music, there's always going to be a niche in the market. Mm-hmm. Tyler, too, and the same thing. Those two dudes have not gotten out of their prime. And they don't drop as often as, like, a lot of people. Like, Lil Baby, Gunna, they're in their prime right now. They drop, like, every year. That's kind of the thing you have to do before you're on that level status of being just, like, when you get to, like, get in that conversation with the GOATs. But this dude, Frank, has dropped two projects. This dude, um, Tyler, drops every two years. Mm -hmm. But they just have been constantly in their prime. And I think 
to say those dudes aren't legends at this point as well, you'd kind of be cutting them short a little bit. But is there anyone that's, like, going to be in their prime soon that you think that people got to look out for or you think is, like, peaking in the next couple of years? Who's in their prime that people got to look out for? I the think is a good conversation. I think – I think the baby is a great guy. I think NBA young boy, perfect example of somebody that's opening into their prime, if not already in his prime right now, both on a marketable level, but just creative level too. I think every project he's put out since, what is that, AI2 has been a great body of work. It's yeah. definitely been pretty fucking enjoyable. So young boy, I'd say for a fact, I think Roddy Rich, we're going to see open up. I'm going to throw another name in there. Don Tolliver is going to be in his prime in the next five to ten years. Yeah. And I think we think tra- Travis is another one of those dudes that has never really gotten out of his prime. And I think he might be converting into that young thug stage, Boss right? Boss type level. Like I'm saying, like his utopia might just be like thug so much fun. Because after that, those dudes are certified. Like after so much fun, thug certified. I mean, he was certified before that to a lot of people, but made an album, went number one. Made a label album, put all of his friends on with Slime Season 2, went number one. Travis Scott, one of the biggest tours ever of Astroworld, just like doubled what he did for Rodeo sales-wise and just like took over. After Utopia, I wouldn't be surprised if he's just like, that's what y'all getting, and... I might take a little backseat, do features, just because it's like, bro, the amount of just creativity and, like, stress it could put on artists to do albums like that. Like, people want those Yeezus, those rodeos, shit like that, but, like, those just come and go. Like, you can't, like, just sit down and do that. Like, if you want those things, it's gonna come once in a lifetime type shit. Yeah, for a fact. I think Travis is in a very similar position as Thug, as you name. He's going to do good. Bro, I think Travis has pretty much just taken what 50, Kanye, Drake, all these dudes have done in the just the marketing sphere of just being a rapper. And he's just done it on fucking steroids, bro. I think 2020 is going to go down as like... One of the craziest years for Travis Scott, or even just rappers in general, opening up vast different lanes for marketing. Yeah. Like, I don't fucking know, dude. It just, he he's like the first rapper to me that's proving to the rest of these labels that artists themselves are their own fucking brand. Like, like fuck, you can get bigger than the label. Like, fucking Kanye preaches all the time. Like, yeah. fucking... Travis should have CEOs along with his name. Like, yeah, like he needs a Travis Scott. The name needs a board of directors. That's how. Like, I mean, he came up in like the whole new e-commerce going on, everything like that. But like, this dude has just made millions. He's. I mean, he's got the dope tours and everything. Like, his whole team is insane on this shit. And you're not gonna see another person like Travis Scott for a long time. Like, it takes someone that's so deep-rooted in culture to just kill this shit. And I think he's got it. But I think the one thing that is, like, a cool conversation is about people that may or may not, that people talk about are in their prime, but, like, low-key, they could be falling off. And I'm going to say one name, and I think it's going to be a hot take, but I think Lil Uzi has to do something with his brand or he's not going to be too relevant in the next five years. I think that's a pretty solid take. I think, wow, that's actually a really good take. He's, I think, I don't, like, I've seen the rap game so much, and I've seen people with peaks like that. But creatively, I don't think he's progressed too much from shit like Exo Tour Life and The Way Life Goes being the best trap songs of all time, in my opinion. And, like, both of those are in the top ten, for me at least. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people would say that as well. Those are generational songs that you don't really get. From then on, I think he peaked at those points in his life, yeah. or in his career at least. I'm, and I think he has the talent to go in the future, but he's got to do something. No, I definitely agree with you, and I think with the Cardi Uzi conversation, that's what fucking separates them. As with Cardi, he is actively trying new things with his brand and his sound. 
to just expand his reach. I feel like Uzi has been very much found. Stagnant. Just. Found his lane. I don't know, dude. Yeah, I agree with you, bro. He's got to change up something sonically that just starts to intrigue people again. There's not much excitement. Yeah, like you don't get that feeling you used to. I'm excited for the next Playboy Cardi album. Yeah. I am excited for the next Travis Scott album. Because you want to see what they're going to do. Uzi, I kind of feel like you know what he's going to do. I can't say I'm excited for the album after Eternal Take. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like I think that's definitely a hot take and a discussion a lot of Uzi fans don't want to have. Like, I think he's got the talent to do so. Is he, though, is the biggest question, ideally. And I want to say yes, bro, but I haven't been feeling it too much. Like, I didn't really love his verse on Tyler, the Creator's album. And even before that, I mean, he's been doing those remixes and collabs that are kind of just, like, features out the ass. But, like, and he just doesn't sound different. Like, you can't tell me our turn on the take and love his Lil Uzi verse The World 2 didn't sound that different. Or did sound different from Love Is Rage 2. And then Love Is Rage 2 just sounds like an evolved form of the perfect love tape to me. Like, I think he progressed from the perfect love tape to Love Is Rage 2. But then from then on, I think he's just been stagnant. Yeah, for sure. I think we need to see him work with a lot more people on the production end of things. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no reason Uzi shouldn't be working with a Mike Dean or there's no reason Uzi shouldn't keep working with a Pharrell or a fucking Kanye. Because he needs to just expand his sound. Yeah. Not to, like, come at any artist like that or anything, but, like, like Nav is not helping Lil Uzi expand his sound. And, and Something yeah, like that. And that's exa- exactly like you said. Like, I fucking love Uzi's music. And Uzi is always going to be a legend to me. This is just what I feel like most people have come to a conclusion of is like we want to get re excited after everything yeah. you dropped to fiend for something else something more i feel like eternal to take didn't do it as much i don't love eternal to take as much as some people do it just wasn't a time for the album to live like it was just quarantine vibes and it just always reminds me of that and i just don't go back to it not saying it's a bad album but for 28 songs and saying he completely delivered i think you would be true but to say he progressed as an artist I think you would be lying if you said that. Like, it's just not creatively better. That was this week's wrap-up from the boys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the fucking bell. We're grinding our asses off out here. We appreciate you. We love you. See you next time. Grips on sides, ready. Grips outside, little bitches, ready. No chest, I'm aim for the heady. One in the head, got one in the frame.